We thought our subject would be memorial thoughts. Now we're gonna do something a little different than what we normally would do in a discourse. And it has to do with a question. And the question is this, from your heart, what does the memorial mean to you personally? Now we had a wonderful study just recently in our class, you see our class here, and there are other brethren who meet with us online. And we asked that question, and it was quite interesting what we found out. And I'd like to share with you their thoughts and then the comments that uh, the brethren gave and those that were fellowshipping with us at that time that wanted to take part. So let's begin. My daughter wanted to be a part of it. Sister Jamie, as you can see here in the picture. And she is from Portland, Oregon. And uh, she wanted to express her thoughts on what she felt personally about the memorial in this way. She said for us to be very watchful because this, uh, the adversary is very wily. She says to defeat the adversary, keeping my all on the altar. And I thought that, were, that was a beautiful statement coming from her. And you can see her family here, brother Nathan Austin, he's an elder in the Portland class and their sons, Quinn and Caleb. And it was beautiful seeing that uh, uh, particular uh, picture of them. So we're going to consider what Sister Jamie thought in, in her consideration by using these words that uh, we felt were very appropriate to, to her particular definition here of what she felt the memorial meant in her heart. She said, present besetments, whatever they may be, being of subtle character, are the more calculating to delude and ensnare. And that's how the adversary works. So when you look at the word subtle, it means so delicate or precise as to be difficult to analyze or describe. And the adversary at this time, brethren, is very powerful, especially to the Lord's people at this memorial season. To the child of God then, as Paul said when he was in Thessalonica in the second chapter, uh, the uh, second Thessalonians, second chapter, the 11th verse, he says, the adversary can delude reason, complicate issues, and make your walk unclear to the point where fear, hatred, deceit, even jealousy, evil speaking, and anger can enter in. So Sister Jamie would like us to consider the point in 1 Peter 5 eight to be sober at this time, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So being watchful is very important. Thank you, Sister Jamie. So let's go to our next sister. And you could see a red star. She's in our class here. And this is Sister Barbara Novosat. And she gave us some thoughts on how she feels about serving the Lord. And she used it in the aspect of prayer always being thankful for what she can reason with in her mind and heart in prayer to the Heavenly Father on her behalf. Now, Sister Barbara has been a wonderful sister in our class for so many years. She is losing her eyesight, and it's difficult for her to get out at times. But we so much appreciated her love and all of her sacrifices through the year in serving the Lord. What a wonderful sister. And her thoughts on prayer being very important as to our walk and our recognition of this memorial season. Prayer isn't just about asking God for things. You, you need or desire. We all want to do that, but it's about establishing a relationship with him built on faith and trust. And this dear sister showed that in her life so many times. In Romans 12, 12, it says, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. This lovely sister 
brought forth so many of these wonderful things as far as relationship and her prayer to the Heavenly Father and her help and guidance to the Lord's people and to the Grand Rapids brethren. She's just been a sincere sister. And it would be nice if the brethren ever had the opportunity of meeting that sister. I, I appreciate her so much. She's been such an asset to the Grand Rapids brethren. And these are her thoughts and her feelings on what the memorial means to her. It's very prayerful. And she loves the brethren dearly. Our next family here is one that's very close to all of us. It's a part of our family, basically. It's, um, it's uh, Sister Yusina Shab, and her thoughts were on faithfulness. And her husband, Brother Dan Shab, he's a deacon in our class, and his was on introspective. And it's a great reminder to us in this aspect of faithfulness, because the adversary is going to do everything he can he can to bring doubt and discouragement to us and to have more of a heart rendering and a love for the Heavenly Father's work for the brethren and be stronger in that aspect. And Brother Dan, in this introspective quality, it's, it's a renewal and very it, it brings out a very special time to us, a special evening that we dwell with the Lord. And we're thankful to know and understand and appreciate God's message. So these two loving brethren, Sister Yusina and Brother Dan Shab, have been such a wonderful asset to the Grand Rapids brethren. And their thoughts and consideration on this point of faithfulness to the Lord has been uh, one that we've appreciated so much. And here you could see their family, their son Eli, their daughter Olivia, and their little daughter, Hannah, and they've been so wonderful to the brethren. It is one thing to simply believe in God, but another to be faithful to his plan. And they have certainly been that. In Hebrews 11, 1, their faithfulness comes from a place of trust and loyalty. They not only trust the Heavenly Father and his plan, but they trust the brethren, and they want to be loyal to them and appreciate them. So make someone smile is the way I look at it and the way they look at it. They're always wanting brethren to feel comfortable and appreciate one another. The next family is uh, my daughter, sister Jody Schaub. And she was very emotional in her thoughts and her husband, brother Emick, he's a deacon in our class. And his thought was basically surrounded about the point of giving, appreciating one another in the aspect of giving. And you could see their family here, their son, Jacob, their daughter, Riley, and their little daughter, Adeline. They've been such a wonderful blessing to the Grand Rapids brethren. You know, this emotional quality that they want to instill a sister, especially when Sister Jody gave her thoughts on it, what the memorial meant to her. It, it, it means something that uh, we appreciate totally within our heart, within our mind, and the quality that it, it presents to us as we walk this narrow way. Yet caring for one another and for all the brethren, all people, when we have an opportunity she was tearful in her thoughts, and sometimes that comes out in the memorial season, and it brings out such wonderful blessings to not only her, but to us. She's, she's been a wonderful asset as being the, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, brethren who leads our, our young children in the Sunday schools, because we have like six there, and in, whenever any uh, other brethren come, she takes care of their children. She has wonderful classes with him. And so does uh, she joins with Sister Yustina. And then Brother Emick, uh, as a deacon, he's always wanting to give. Off, he said I'll, he would offer up his life for the brethren at any time. He always uh, takes the, the, uh, 
those moments in his life where he can spend time and fellowship with those of like precious faith. He loves being with the brethren and he loves helping the brethren. And the older he said he gets, the closer he is to the heavenly father. And that's what we all feel, isn't it brethren? When we first tasted the love of the Lord, the older we get, the more we appreciate it. So in John the 11th chapter, and we're not going to be reading any of these scriptures. We're just going to present them to you here. And the essence behind them is one of the greatest gifts we can give someone who is hurting is our presence and sharing in their suffering, being there for them. And that's what uh, Brother Emick would always want to do in Sister Jody. They've shown that in their character so many times. And it reminds us of the thought brought out in John 11 here, how Jesus comforted Mary and Martha by the raising of their uh, brother Lazarus here. Even though he had passed away, he was brought forth by, by the love of the Heavenly Father through his dear son. And this is what we all want to try to do to each other. Show how much we care for each other, especially in those difficult times. And in John 13, 1 through 17, they have shown, uh, Brother Amick, Sister Jody have shown this so many times, the washing of uh, uh, the feet of the disciples. Here Jesus is washing his disciples' feet, speaking words of comfort to them and encouraging them to not worry or let their hearts be troubled. And I think that's a very strong admonition especially at this time in this memorial season, because there's so much that is uh, distracting us, can distract us, and can make us uncomfortable out there. So let's keep these things in mind as far as caring for one another, helping one another, and lifting one another up. So our next brother who gave his thoughts, as you see the star over his head, in, in our class, and that's Brother Chet Kendra. He used the word redeem, praying always, redeeming the time, because the, the walk and the struggles are, are going to be there, and the sacrificing, and the understanding, and, and remembering what our Lord had, had uh, laid before us. So this point of redeeming the time, because the days are evil, is very important, brethren. And his thought on that, his thought on his feelings behind what the memorial meant to him in his mind and in his heart, redeem. So the Lord has prepared a place for those who are his, where there will be, there will never be sorrow, there'll never be mourning. It will be a place of everlasting joy and happiness. And I can't help but think when Brother Chet was talking, you could, you could hear his voice breaking down because of that. Can you imagine that time, brethren, when there'll be no more sorrow or mourning? And the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. They're on those brethren who have made this covenant of sacrifice. And his ears are attentive to their cry all the time, as is recorded in Psalms 34, 15. So Brother Chet has been a fine example to our class. He has helped in so many ways of taking care of the brethren in the place we meet. He's been an excellent uh, maintenance coordinator behind the scenes. He has done a wonderful job to make it uh, not only comfortable, but, but to do what the brethren would like him to do. He's, he's always there. When you ask him to do something, he's there to help and encourage. So he would be a wonderful brother to meet if you ever had the opportunity. I've enjoyed my fellowship with him all these years for so many, so many years, and he's been a blessing. So the Lord has prepared a place for those who want to serve and to want to be together. So we thank Brother Chet for knowing and understanding the appreciation of redeeming the time, because we need to do that, brother. Our next brother is our brother Dan Annis, and he is from Florida. He joins us online, and he is a deacon in our class. And he says so many wonderful things about how solemn this occasion is. Jesus was willing to die for you and I, for all, 
and he calls it one of the greatest gifts that was ever given on the face of the earth. And I agree with him on that. And I'm sure we all do, brethren. It's solemn and it's characterized by deep sincerity. And this brother certainly has a deep sincerity and love for the, the truth and the brethren. And he gives such wonderful thoughts in regards to all that. The solemn points that uh, Paul brings out in, in Paul's uh, point to the brethren, to the elders, to the leaders in Acts 20, 28. And I think it's an admonition to all of us to be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. You know, this solemnness behind the, our walk with the Lord and our opportunity to partake of that memorial on that evening is a very solemn occasion. Brother Dan reminds us of that in his definition, in his uh, way of presenting what he feels in his heart, the memorial means to him. Our next uh, set of brethren, our brother Joe and sister Sue Perinello. You, you, you couldn't meet uh, such finer brethren. They're very thankful. They're happy to be with the family of God. They pray for everyone. And they certainly love the fellowship and love the brethren. They're always thankful. And they have uh, accepted the Lord and appreciate the message that has been given to them. They live in the Upper Peninsula, so they join us online. And everyone, they said, wants to be accepted. So accept one another. And especially when the times get difficult. So in true fellowship, as 1 John 1, 3 through 4 states, we meet brethren or come to meetings and we should feel love and acceptance. It's the first thing that we all notice, isn't it, brethren? Then we learn that the source of this love is not just, is, isn't it just in the people, in the love of these people, but in the fact that these people have come to know the love of God in Christ. They have felt that. We have felt that in their appreciation of God's message, in their thoughts, in the, in the words that they express to us. Truly thankful, truly appreciate God's message and wanting to be a part of it. It's lovely to have them with us, and we are thankful that they are a part of our class. Brother Henrik and Sister Maria Schaub. These are the mother and father of Brother Daniel Schaub and Brother Emmick Schaub. So they're very close to us because uh, Brother Emmick married uh, 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 our daughter, Jody. And uh, so they become part of the family and they are at the Grand Rapids class as well. And they always want to help. Their thought in regards to the memorial was, how can I help? Just like our Lord showed in his life, they want to do the same. In Hebrews 13, 16, and do not neglect to do good and to share with others for which such sacrifices God is pleased. One of the ways you can demonstrate your love for the Lord is to be compassionate caring, caring toward those you encounter along life's journey. I think our Lord made it a point to be courteous to others always, be polite and love others through kindness. This is what these two dear brethren have shown in their love for the Lord and the truth and the brethren and our wonderful, helpful, encouraging brethren in our class, and we are happy to have them as part of our brethren. Caring for one another is paramount in, in their mind and their heart as they see this memorial season and what it means to them, not only at this time, but through the entire year. So it's lovely to have them with us. Sister Linda Lashbrook, most brethren do not know her. She feels the memorial is a very, it's 
It's the heart thought. It's the heart in remembrance of the perfect love, the perfect truth, and the perfect promise and sacrifice that was given. Sister Linda lives uh, around the Indianapolis area. She's kind of isolated in a way. And she's been a wonderful sister. We've had opportunities of uh, Sister Esther and I have fellowshipping with her personally. Uh, basically, from the standpoint that, ha that I had the opportunity at one time, um, and I appreciated that privilege of uh, being uh, the representative for her mother who had passed away. So I, I did her funeral. And that's Sister Bonnie Buckles. Some of you may have remembered her. She's a wonderful sister. And this is uh, Cinder La uh, Sister Linda Lashbrook's mother. Sister Bonnie Buckles was one of the sisters who led the young people for so many years at the General Convention in Sunday schools. And not only would she teach the part, but she would play the part. And she would dress the part. Here she's dressed as Ruth. <laughs> and so uh, my daughters remember her very well. And Sister Linda exudes that type of character, that type of love. And we love having her with us. She's a beautiful sister and she has a strong heart and love for the Lord. She always would, I think she would make these statements over and over, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. The Psalms 51, 10 states. It is written in the Proverbs 423, to keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And certainly she wants to show that in her character. Your actions then are a result of what is in your heart. Jesus says this very clearly in Matthew 12, 34 and 35. Our next couple is Brother David and Sister Wanda Berdahl, and they fellowship with us online from Minnesota. Their thoughts in, in this memorial season uh, that uh, brought them close to the Lord is on prayer and obedience. Brother David deals with Parkinson's and it's difficult for him, and, but he wants to always pray for the brethren. He always prays for those who are undergoing severe difficulties physically and whatever they may be. And he, he has a love for the brethren. This dear brother read the dawn uh, for so many years and it was put on tape and you were able to purchase it and listen to his voice reading the messages uh, that were given in truth from the Dawn uh, magazine. And Sister Wanda, she has uh, some physical uh, difficulties as well, but she brings out the point of obedience and what the memorial means to her. Not to be a slave to the world anymore. She, she doesn't want to focus on that. She doesn't want to be looking at those type of things. She rejoices in knowing that she has the brethren, the truth, and she celebrates that in her heart. And she wants to learn even more. And here you see Sister Esther with them. We had an opportunity of visiting with them as we were traveling. And it was a joy to be with these, with these dear brethren. And we're happy that they join us in fellowship online. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, whatever they may be and have a joy of fellowshipping with each other. So the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And it certainly has been with our relationship with the Berdahls and we've appreciated it so much. Our next uh, brothers, Brother Dan Holmont, his thoughts were on hope. He's, a, he's a, from the Grand Rapids class and Brother Dan worked for so many years, encouraging and helping the brethren and you could see him here sitting with a red star by him. If you walked in our class, he would greet you with a, with a handshake or a hug. He wanted to make you feel comfortable. He wanted to make you feel that you had an opportunity not only to be here, but to be loved. So in Jeremiah 29, 11, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. When people allow our Lord to govern their actions, they stop fighting 
and start showing love for one another. That, I believe, is the hope of the brethren. It certainly will be for the world one day. And I think Brother Dan would say that with open arms. Now, here you see a family, my sister Irene. They joined with us and Brother Chuck and Sister Angie from Arizona. Sister Irene used the word privileged. Sister Angie used the word humbled. And Brother Chuck uh, used the word heart, a heart loyalty. Really knowing and emotionally understanding God's message, both Sister Irene and Sister Angie were emotional in their thoughts that they gave. Taking up the cross, which is a personal gift, listening and loving and learning more. This is what they felt is important at this memorial season. And Brother Chuck, in his heart, desire to serve the Lord, to try to do better, to resist the adversary and temptations, and always pray for help and guidance. It's like as pointed out in this parable of the Good Samaritan, which they have shown in their heart and in their lives. In Luke 10, 25 through 30, Sam explains that people should love everyone, including even their enemies. So in 1 Peter 2, 8 through 10, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Brother Bruce and Sister Elaine Kimball also fellowship with us from Ohio online. They enjoy the stories and the scriptures. They enjoy the love of the brethren. Their Passover studies we have had for so many weeks, they've appreciated in the fellowship for so many years. It's so loving to have them with us. They look at it as rededicating and guiding, guiding their life, remembering the old brethren who have helped you to make your steps correct and strong and being in this proper aspect of love and thankfulness and praying always for help. These two wonderful brethren are always with us and enjoy the fellowship that we have and we enjoy the fellowship that they give us never losing sight. In John 16, 13, for when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. They have felt that in their heart and they have certainly given it. From the wisdom and knowledge of scripture, we can make improved decisions and become better people as we navigate the complexities of this world. By being with each other, we can do that, brethren. We'd like to thank Brother Bruce and Sister Elaine, for their loving care and their fellowship with us from Ohio. Sister Barb Epgalt, you can see her here in the background with her, her husband, Brother Bernd Eckholt. He has passed away now, and they were in the, uh, at that time, in the Florida Convention. And Sister Barb talked about togetherness, about love of the old timers, those that we've learned from who have gone before us. She loved the hugs of the brethren, loving family and friends. She's from Pennsylvania and she joins us online. True friends love you at all times, don't they? In Ecclesiastes 4.10, if either of the brethren falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. She has felt in her heart how the brethren have helped her through all these years after she lost her dear husband. What a wonderful couple. If you've ever gotten to know Brother Byrne and Sister, Sister Barbara, truly loving brethren. And we love her so much when she gets online and fellowships with us. She gives such beautiful prayers. We should be kind and loyal like our Lord who calls his disciples friends. How beautiful those thoughts are in John 15, 15. Remember our, our brother Joe Dominguez gave us a wonderful talk on the friends of the Lord. Friends with each other, knowing that we can be a family and have this togetherness. So thank you, Sister Barb. Brother Tom and Sister Claudia Trezak, seriousness. They say more reverence, understanding, 
changes that will take place, strength in others, honor and worthiness. They're from Wisconsin. Seriousness behind the, this emotional time that we're involved in, brethren, is very important. When Jesus is listened to, really listened to, his word always comes to life because they are living words. They have life and they give life. And I can't help but think how wonderful these two have been. My brother, Tom, it's a little sad now in, in our lives. He has Alzheimer's and uh, he is institutionalized now, but he served so many years as an elder and a leader in the uh, Gary class and was a strong example to the brethren. And it's been difficult on Sister Claudia, but our prayers have been there and they have been those which have helped and encouraged. And knowing that the seriousness behind all of this, brethren, is something we need to focus on to rid ourselves of these so many things that beset the Lord's people in this world of mankind. Give a, they want the living words. They want the words that make life and the, our consecration to be real and to have meaning. Really listening to the Lord. Thank you, Brother Tom, Sister Claudia. Sister Karen Melanowski Shields. She is a loving sister and she brings Philippians 4, 8. Whatsoever things are pure and lovely of good report, think on these things. And you could see the star over her. She's a lovely sister. That's Sister Helena's daughter, Sister Helena Melanowski. So in 1 Corinthians 15, 58 from the King James, it says, being steadfast means trusting the truth of God's word over the say of any man. Being steadfast means being rooted and grounded in the word throughout any season or circumstance. The measure of your steadfastness is proven over time, and certainly it's been hers. We've enjoyed our fellowship with her and loved our opportunities. Sister Alva, she learns the, the not only be a part of giving and wanting to be a part of the Grand Rapids Brethren, but she calls it precious. First Peter 2, 4, coming to Jesus as to a living stone, which has been rejected by many, by men, but is choice and precious in God's sight. She wants to have that in her heart. Sister Alva Anderson, the life offered to those who believe in Christ is eternal, she says from a Greek word meaning never ending. Can you imagine that? There is no question that according to the scriptures, people can be blessed only through faith in our Lord. We thank her for her fellowship for all these years. Brother Ken Osterman, he wants a response. He says, yes, we need to understand and appreciate God's message, even though we have the failings but we need a response when we're called upon, trying never to forsake our Lord. You could see Brother Ken here with a star. In 1 John 2, 6, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. And whosoever claims to live in him must live as, as our Lord lived. Brother Ken is an elder in our class, a very respectful and very conscientious and loving elder. Living in and through God's word is not always easy, but we must constantly try your reasonable service, as Paul says in Romans 12, 1. And if you believe it, he says, then try to live it. It's got a beautiful character. Sister Sarah Melanowski and Brother Tim Melanowski. Brother Tim's an elder in our class. They bring the thoughts of honor and love. This honor have all the saints being part of this team with the harp of God, being able to express it and hear it. And Brother Tim says, always to love the brethren, dealing with constant growth and changes. He says, love is the core of all God's arrangements. So when we apply, as in Exodus 12, 7, the blood on the door, posts and lintels of our heart, we should focus more and more on this time and this purpose and our consecrations. In Romans 3, 25, 
from the NIV, God presented Christ as a sacrifice atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness. So in John 13, 34, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. And you could see their son's will and John here, loving brethren and loving and uh, appreciate their fellowship so much. John and Esther, commitment and failings, <laughs> commitment always wanting to sacrifice and help. Brother John always recognizing the fact that he needs to do more. He needs to love more, sacrifice and endure more and forgive more. That commitment, brethren, is if anyone wishes to come after me, as Luke 9, 23 says, deny yourself, take up your own cross and daily follow me. So when they make this statement, they'd like to make it in the first person singular in Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brothers and sisters, we do not consider ourselves yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing we do, forgetting what is behind and looking forward to what is ahead. We press on toward the goal to win the prize, which God has called us, and uh, to this heaven word in Christ Jesus. Brother George Tivador, retired elder in our class, he wants to bring out the point of renewal, pressing on in another year. And he brings out serving God as a demonstration of our love for him through loving sacrifice to others. He brings out in Romans 12, 11, Paul says that we are to be not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. He's talking about people who are motivated, passionate in their service for God. What a loving brother, as you could see here with a star over his head, his head to serve the brethren in Grand Rapids as an elder for so many years, as well as in Detroit. Sister Joanne and brother Leo Holmont, loving brethren, overwhelming and meditating were their thoughts that they brought forth, a strong loving feelings. Sister Joanne was very tearful in her ex ex expression of how she felt about the memorial. And Brother Leo, in this meditating concept that we have of understanding God's message, what a wonderful thing to do at this time and never to complain and always to forgive. If there ever was a brother who would forgive, it was this dear brother. And he called it an invitation, which I appreciated very much. Jesus literally gave up his life and emptied himself so that he could become full. He took up our plea before the Father so that God would have mercy upon us all, as Isaiah 53, 12. So meditation is associated with emptying the mind and relaxing the body and knowing that our Lord is with us. So if you feel an overwhelming need to cry during this memorial season because of how God loves you by giving his son, then it's okay. Our last servant in the Grand Rapids Bible students is our sister Helena Malinowski. And you talk about devoted brethren, having no doubt, enduring, thankful for whatever the heavenly father has provided. And you could see her loving husband here, Tony, and brother Tim when he was a young man. Romans 12, 11, Sister Alina would say, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And she says a true follower of Christ is, is devout because he or she commits every part of his or her life to loving and living for God. This is not done out of obligation or to earn salvation or God's favor. Instead, we give everything to God because he gave everything to us. We are called to commit our lives wholeheartedly to the one who loves us and gave everything for us. So we'll conclude by saying, brethren, in John 3, 16, which she would say so many times, for God so loved the world that he gave his loving son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, if you were asked from your heart, what does the memorial mean to you? Personally, you've heard from these dear brethren. So let's fill in the blank. 
The Grand Rapids brethren love you all dearly and pray for you always that we all can defeat the adversary. And if we can help you carry your cross so you can make your calling and election sure, we would consider it an honor. To God be the glory. Amen.